So you may have seen in the news this week that there was a two-year-old child who was removed by force from the parent's house because the child had a fever and the, and the parents hadn't brought him to the hospital. What had really happened was that the parents had taken the child to the pediatrician. Um, was it I don't, a pediatrician or a naturopath? It said naturopath, but then another article said pediatrician. So I'm assuming it's a licensed naturopath. There, there are there are doctors that like doing natural stuff, but are still licensed doctors. Is is that correct? Am I fair? Am I being fair there? Um, she was she was definitely so referred to as a naturopath. Some naturopaths have doctorates, but they usually, if you call yourself a, a naturopath, you're not operating under the same regulatory bodies as um physicians okay so there's a, a little bit of a, of a of confusion whether it's a doctor or naturopath yeah. but the the boy the two-year-old boy i think it was was presenting with a 105 degree fever could someone translate that into c for our 40.5 40.5 degrees celsius 105 degrees fahrenheit which is and very close to fatal yeah, 104 is when you start risking brain damage, I believe. So the child is obviously in life-threatening condition. Yeah. The doctor does not have the facilities to treat a patient with a 105-degree fever. Sounds normal to me. I, I didn't run very long as an EMT, but my understanding was that that sort of thing requires hospital intervention. Yes. Not even paramedics can really do anything other than try to keep you cool while they fly as fast as they can to the hospital. Um, for enough of a fever, they might actually send out a helicopter. That's how that's how bad a 105 degree fever is. Yeah. Someone with more experience with 105 degree fever can tell me if they would fly out in helicopter. Uh, my guess is that they would. It's that life threatening. So not a light thing is what I'm trying to get at. This was not, you know, oh, well, we're not sure if he's going to get worse or not. Take him home and monitor him and bring him back if he gets sicker. No, she told them, you got to take him to the emergency room now. Yep. And the parents expressed concerns. I mean, they said they were afraid they'd be charged or reported to Child Protective Services, uh, or whatever it's called in Arizona, as child abusers because the children weren't vaccinated. Yeah. And they were explicitly, expressly reassured that no one was going to report them, but they had to take the, the, the child to the hospital. The doctor, naturopath, called the hospital, told them the child was coming, told them to be prepared. Yeah. Sent the mother away. Mother sent, said that they're going to take the child to the hospital. The doctor followed up. This whole thing happened because the doctor had the wherewithal. So while you might disagree with anti-vaccination and all that, I give kudos to this doctor for saying, no, this is, a, this is the thing. You got to do this and I'm going to follow up with it. So whether or not I disagree with the doctor for having anything to do with anti-vaccinations, whatever, I don't know. The doctor tried to, you know, did everything to save this child here. And the child's alive. Like the child's, the child's as far as I know, the child's okay. Yeah. I don't know the child has no brain damage, but what exactly, I don't know how you tell that in a two-year-old either. Yeah, it's not for you. But the child doesn't make it to the hospital. The doctor calls all the hospitals in the area, the child hasn't gone to any hospital. It wasn't even the mother changed her mind and said, okay, we'll go to a different hospital. They literally went home. They're, they're, later on, the mother's statement is that the child's fever broke. Okay, that could be true. I don't have any evidence to dispute it. But when you're in a life-threatening situation and the doctor has told you you're basically ordered yeah. to take the child to the hospital, I don't know that you get to just decide, okay, well, we measured his temp. We, measured we don't know the quality of the thermometer they measured with. We don't know if it was the appropriate thermometer. We don't know if they held it in the right place for the right time. Did they buy a, a oral thermometer and use it other places or did they buy an other place thermometer and use it orally? <laughs> you know what I mean? Did they buy an ear thermometer and then didn't hold it in the ear properly or something? We don't know. So at the very least, if they didn't want to go to the emergency room, they should have gone back to the doctor or called and said, well, his fever's broke. What should we do now? Yeah. 
And the doctor could have said, oh, okay, great. Bring him back. Let me check him out. And then I'll send him home. Yeah. But they were so afraid of a bill from the hospital. Now, that's a separate issue because that's a legit thing. I'm afraid from a bill from a hospital. Uh, and being reported as child abusers that they did not bring the child back. So how does this get to the point where now their door is being broken down and the child violently taken away from them? And I, by violently, I don't mean the child was ripped away from them. By violently, I mean uh, force had to be used. Force had to be used to break down the door. And the man had to be detained uh, while the child was removed. And then I believe that the parents have been released and there's no charges. And there might be charges coming. I don't know. But there's no charges as, as of the incident. Police normally don't have the ability to break down your door without suspicion of a crime. Yeah. And there's arguments here. Was a crime being committed? Well, welfare of a child, you know, neg neglecting a child's health could definitely be considered a crime. Well, the fever broke. So are they neglecting the child? Well, we don't know if the fever broke. So how do so now what do we, is it do, do they have enough for exigent circumstances can they just go and break down the door well it didn't have to be that way Arizona enacted a law that allows the police to assist child protective services if they get a warrant a, a real warrant mm. not a fake warrant like we talked about the other day with a real warrant they went to go get the child and they were denied access and after some time they broke down the door and removed the father, detained him right there at the door. You can see it on the video. And then took the child to the hospital yeah. where the child was treated. I, I want to say that there were two other children that were taken into foster care as well. There were two other children that were taken into foster care. This, all, this whole thing happened over a month ago. Those children are still in foster care. The children have not been returned to these parents. Um, I've read reports that there were other issues in the house as well. The children had stains all over their rooms of unknown origin. Things weren't clean. Things didn't smell right. Uh, so the children were placed in foster care yes. and the parents are fighting for custody back. Also quickly a comment like NPR saying, why did the doctor not call for an ambulance from the doctor's surgery? Well, if indeed the medical bill would have also been an issue. Adding another bill on top of it for an ambulance yeah. could have been their breaking we, point. So. What, is, what does the word ambulance mean? Ambulance comes from the word ambulate, which means to move. You're, an ambulance is literally meant to transport you to the hospital. Yes. So why would you force the parents to transport the child to the hospital via ambulance when they just said they're going to they're be take the child to the hospital in their car? Yes. My father got hit by a three-wheeler. No, he was on a three-wheeler. And he hit something, and he got crushed by the three-wheeler. It broke, like, ribs in his chest and hurt his back, and he was talking a different language. He couldn't breathe. He refused the ambulance and wanted my mom to drive him to the hospital. Hmm. So, not the same scenario. Yeah. But, yeah, there's nothing wrong with driving somebody to the hospital, especially and, if and, they're not yeah, ble so like bleeding and, out. Like You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not otherwise in need of care during the trip, the trip to the hospital. Yes, the uh, child was in need of care on the trip to the hospital, but like I just said, paramedics don't really have facilities to cool a child off other than lowering the temperature in the ambulance. Yeah. You could turn the air conditioning on in the car. Like, it didn't seem to me like it would be impossible for the parents to get the child to the hospital in timely fashion. Yes. It was the fact yeah. that they didn't take the, the child to the hospital in timely fashion. Yeah. Then, I'm sure an ambulance was called to take the child from oh, yeah. when the police had the child. I, I, don't, I, I don't know exactly how it was done, but I'm assuming the paramedics were there and looked at the child and took the child to the hospital. And not that some policeman just put the kid in a car seat in the car. Yes. That, that wouldn't be how they'd do that, no. But that, I'm just speculating there, I admit that. I know in my area that if somebody can safely transport you to the hospital that they prefer that you take your own transportation versus an ambulance because ambulances mm. are um you might need limited it limited resources <laughs> yeah so so but yeah somebody else who is unable to transport themselves might need it yeah so this isn't a story about anti-vaxxers although that comes into it yeah the child as far as i know didn't have a disease that was treatable by a vaccine um, although the child's medical records and history are private. We're not necessarily going to know unless it comes out in public record, either through the parents or the courts, what was wrong with the child. Mm. The doctor said that they, that they thought the child might have meningitis. 
I don't even know if meningitis is something that can be vaccinated for. I don't. Is it not part it of the MMR? Okay. Vaccine. Okay, but not every strain of meningitis yeah, can be. True. So we also don't know what strain it was, and we don't know if it's a vaccinatable strain. Let's assume for the moment that it was. That's that. That's where that comes into that. But the more the more interesting legal issue is why was Arizona able to take the child away, and is that a right the right thing to do? I, I mean, I'm firmly on the side of that was the right thing to do. I, I agree with parental autonomy, but then you have to remember that the child is not property. The child will grow up to be an adult, and that adult is going to suffer from all the things that happened to it when it was a child. If if something happened. Like, I mean, this is quite obvious, but if someone injured the child's hand in a permanent fashion, the child will have a permanently injured hand for the rest of their life. Well, we're talking about the child's brain here. Don't you think that's important? Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, that's the most. That's one of the most important things. That is the child. Basically, you could have no senses and still technically have an operatable brain. I believe there was a man caught in a coma, like not not in a coma. He was he was caught in a not coma, like a paralysis kind of thing, but was conscious for 19 state. years. Wasn't vegetative. He was fully conscious. He knew what was going on around him, but he didn't have the ability to move. He could see and hear, but he couldn't move. He couldn't talk. And it was when someone was a student, I believe it was, was 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 practicing doing brain scans and things like that, practiced on this patient and found a fully operational brain instead of a vegetative brain. And it was like, oh, my goodness, there's a human being trapped in this body. Like there is a living human being living in this brain and they've been trapped there for 19 years. The story itself is worth mentioning on this on the stream. So long story short. The reason they're able to do that is obviously for the welfare of the child. And I've no idea how someone couldn't think through, well, yeah, we want people to have parental autonomy, yeah. but there's a point at which you're not using your autonomy to, in the best interests of the child. Okay, so the MMR vaccine isn't usually till the child is older. Well, okay. MMR, MMR is apparently has, does not have meningitis included. I'm, oh, okay, so the M's are not I mean. Those. Obviously, I was vaccinated in the Netherlands, and it's not moms are not called moms in the Netherlands, so that's different. But so that's our show, everyone. As you are well aware, this is a community-supported channel, and you you guys, your support is just amazing, especially today. But today was a special day, so let's acknowledge at least today was a special day. We wouldn't normally get this kind of support, but other than this, your support is already also very meaningful and material to our mission here. So thank you to the following March Patreon supporters at the $50 plus level. Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mantain, Michael Pierce, Terry Crisp, Richard Fournier, Spirit Bear, Jan Negray, Daniel Perez, Ospernari. I'll, sh I'll throw Sean McNamara and Atarik in there for your help today. Thank you very much for your support. And we'll also, uh, you know, the April thing will start tomorrow or, or so. Uh, anybody whose pledges are remaining today when it crosses over into tomorrow and I guess I don't know what the if there's an in-between period but Patreon will start charging your card sometime tomorrow for the support in April and then once that's all charged I will update these lists with the new supporter lists for the videos that drop. The crawl will still be for the March supporters since the video was produced in March. So thank you very much for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. This has been one heck of a birthday show. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the videos that we dropped this week. Love you all. Bye. I'm pretty sure I had the meningitis vaccine when I was like six months old. I think I had it a lot, a lot few times that I got vaccinated for that, like over the period of a few years. Yeah, and there's viral meningitis and bacterial, and so there's a, a couple things that can cause yes. meningitis. But there are vaccines for at least some of them. Um, yeah. I know I because mean, I keep thinking I should go the get buff? mine. The buff? Yeah, that's mumps. Yeah, the buff. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? It's mumps. Like, I don't know, like, what does mumps mean? Mumps does sound really weird. I huh? guess so.